I'm Dr Jude Hayward, I'm a GP and I'm also a GP with a special interest or GPSI in genetics and genomics. Primary care practitioners will be familiar with the field of genetics which refers to the study and application of single genes. Genomics is a term which is relatively new and what genomics describes is the study of the entirety of an individual's DNA, the entirety of their genome. What the advent of genomics means for primary care practitioners is that more and more people are likely to access testing and bring those results either for themselves or their families to the GP. GPs should continue to use the skills they use every day in risk assessment, uh, managing emotional consequences and holistic management of the patient and the family in dealing with these. Patients may also consult other members of the primary care team, such as nurse practitioners or physician's associates as their first port of call, so they need to be equally aware of red flags and the ways that genomic issues may show themselves. Primary care practitioners sometimes don't realise how commonly genomics issues present within primary care. For instance, 1 in 17 people have a so-called rare disease and 80% of these have a genetic or genomic basis. This means that a significant number of people or patients on a practice list will have a rare disease. Genomics plays a role in lots of different chronic conditions including diabetes, cancer, all the things which are um, in general practice every day. So the, the primary care team's role is incorporating this into the overall care of the patient, whatever their condition is. There are many times to think genetics, including so-called red flags, which are things not to miss. For instance, a family history. If someone comes with a family history of a condition with multiple family members affected, particularly if they've been affected at a younger age, the GP should start to think, is there something genetic going on here? Another example would be multiple health problems or developmental delay in children. This is another time to think genetics. Or again, a surprising test result, such as an unusually high cholesterol with no other explanation. Primary care practitioners may come into contact with genomics in several different ways. Currently, cancer is still the primary way. Either people may come talking about or wanting to ask about a family history of cancer, or people may have been diagnosed with cancer themselves and had treatment tailored to a genomics test result. Up to 5% of people who are diagnosed with cancer will have an underlying cancer genetic syndrome. These underlying inherited cancer syndromes do carry high risks of developing cancer. For instance, those who carry a BRCA1 gene change or gene variant may have up to an 80% lifetime risk of developing cancer. So it's important that these patients are identified and referred onward to specialist services as appropriate. Another way that it may present to primary care practitioners is through rare disease. Increasing numbers of patients are having a, a genomic diagnosis, a molecular diagnosis, as a result of their genetic condition. And they may come asking about the implications for other family members and asking for access for testing and also to discuss reproductive choices as well. Direct-to-consumer testing, so patients accessing genomic testing themselves, either through the internet or via a local pharmacy, is becoming increasingly common. So, for instance, if a patient has requested a test result over the internet, a direct-to-consumer test, they may have considerable anxiety about the result, particularly if uh, this result is not deemed to be clinically valid or reliable and therefore no further action would be taken in the NHS. Primary care practitioners are experts in managing emotional consequences, in managing anxiety and reassuring, and helping the patient uh, assess their risk and know what they can do to help themselves. As genomic testing becomes more advanced and increasingly available, more patients may be eligible for testing where they weren't before. This will mean that referral criteria are likely to change, and it's important that primary care practitioners know where to find these up-to-date referral criteria and have an awareness to reassess when a patient presents with the same problem again.